This is Lake Crabtree, located in Morrisville, North Carolina, near the Raleigh-Durham International Airport. Year-round, visitors from near and far come to this recreational lake to enjoy hiking, boating, and fishing in a beautiful wooded setting. The lake is 520 acres, as I mentioned. The land is 212. We have one of the larger parks in the county system. We gain about 360,000 visitors a year sometimes. But something in the water here makes Lake Crabtree different than other local parks. To understand why, one must look three miles upstream to Ward Transformer, a former electrical transformer reconditioning plant. Below Ward Transformer is a creek called Little Briar Creek. That feeds into Briar Creek Reservoir, which then feeds into Briar Creek, which then enters Lake Crabtree. Lake Crabtree then becomes Crabtree Creek below our dam and runs all the way to the Noose River. Contamination has been found in all those bodies of water. The visitors and residential community of Lake Crabtree are not alone. The Ward Transformer site is only one of 31 priority hazardous waste sites in North Carolina. The United States Environmental Protection Agency estimates that one in four Americans lives within four miles of a hazardous waste site. The War Transformer facility was built in 1964 on 11 acres of undeveloped land near the RDU airport. For eight years, nothing captured or controlled water that was discharged from the plant's treatment process. This discharged water included a class of chemicals called polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs. They were released into the stream on the property, the same stream that feeds into Lake Crabtree. I mean, it really has impacted the park Tremendously, fishing has dropped off probably 75% of what it was before the contamination was, was brought to our attention. PCBs are man-made oil-like chemicals used as insulation for electrical equipment. They are odorless, tasteless, and relatively clear in liquid form. Yeah, essentially PCBs are a very stable pro compound and they settle out in the sediment. They bind to organic matter and soil particles. So they're not suspended in the water column very long. The problem is that small organisms in that sediment layer do become food for species like fish, uh, who are in turn eaten by species like bald eagles and great blue herons, or in our case, humans that may consume those fish as well. Soil itself and the sediment, it's been determined that one part per million is an acceptable risk for the soil and sediment. And that's for human exposure. That's not eating the fish, this is for human exposure. Touching the soil, inhaling it, ingesting it. PCBs hold the fifth place on the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services list of hazardous chemicals, right behind arsenic, lead, mercury, and vinyl chloride. PCBs were banned from manufacture in the U.S. in 1977. If left untreated, they can persist in the environment for hundreds of years. Known impacts are cancer, uh, skin and nail impacts. Uh, people have complained of cracked nails and developmental issues in the reproductive process. Not much is known about some of the long-term impacts. There have been, you know, people out here still catching fish, you know, throwing them in a bucket, bringing them home to eat. Just, you know, wonder how many people are actually taking this home for the family dinner uh, without really understanding the repercussions. You know, it's one thing to read a sign, it's a entirely other to uh, speak to a state toxicologist and really understand what that may mean. In 1980, Congress established the Superfund program to clean up the country's worst hazardous sites. The Ward Transformer site is one of many Superfund sites that have PCBs as a primary contaminant. Some of these sites have higher levels of contamination and therefore can inform us of the human health effects caused by chronic PCB exposure. The community of Fort Edward, New York on the Hudson River is one such community was advertising at that time that GE was going to light the world. That was important to Fort Edward because here was a, you know, a large national company that had a mission and it would have allowed the local workforce to be part of, of what at the time was very challenging work. What we didn't know and we were always deprived of until much later were the toxic implications of the chemicals that General Electric was using in their manufacturing, specifically PCBs and solvents like TCE. From their own production records, we know that 1.2 million pounds of PCBs went into the Hudson River. From the workers who work there, 
there's a specific condition called chloracne in which the skin becomes bright red, ulcerates, you get oozing wounds that won't heal. Um, we've had people who have sustained amputation as a result of exposure to the chemicals. The street I grew up on, three homes in a row, three young children, all with brain cancer, on a street that has 29 homes on it. What are the odds? That's a frightening thing. At the Ward Transformers Superfund site in North Carolina, PCB contamination exists, but at lower levels. For humans and wildlife around Ward Transformer, the main route of exposure to PCBs is through consumption of contaminated fish caught downstream of the former facility. Cleanup of the facility and some downstream areas is currently underway. Uh, most of the contamination was, was, was found at the war transformer facility itself and some of the surrounding uh, uh, properties. That's where the highest concentrations are of PCBs. Uh, when EPA realized that the, the, na the nature of the problem at the facility was, was uh, more than, than we thought, uh, we uh, began uh, looking for the response potentially responsible parties or PRPs. Superfund provides meetings and information sessions for the public and they're well advertised and there is an opportunity for concerned fishermen or anyone concerned with the general health of the environment to get involved, to ask questions, to find out what the options are, you know, what's in it for them and, and, and can they pressure the EPA or perhaps their representatives in government to you know, speak loudly for them, show, you know, show some concern. I think river keepers have drawn a very hard line in the sand to say this is an unacceptable proposition for anybody uh, who recreates here or lives here uh, that wants to share and enjoy this public trust resource and we are going to continue to take that hard stand uh, as long as there's a river keeper program in the local area or water bodies all across the world that it's unacceptable just to allow this level of contamination. We've had a lot different you know, um, positions here from our political leaders that want this to be rectified. They don't want Lake Crabtree to be, uh, you know, a PCB soup bed for, you know, the next 30 years. Communities impacted by hazardous waste can be involved in cleanup decisions and have the power to influence the outcomes. Whether or not there is a cleanup happening in your area, you can still protect yourself and your family by learning about the most common contaminants, the ways you might be exposed to those contaminants, and their potential health effects. Visit the UNC Superfund Basic Research Program website to learn more about hazardous waste sites in North Carolina.